Our third speaker is Lisa Barwani. She's a civil engineer and has a master's and a PhD in health and technology. She teaches up and I mean, yeah, as well. Um, at the University uh, in Sao Paulo and the Design Master's Program and Undergraduate in Fashion and Digital Technology. I decided to present a part of my research and uh, I have been researching about space and body and mobility is now the word who is uh, um, driving me to different uh, fields. Okay, and the context of mobile, I will agree because I have to run. Uh, the context of mobile technology interfaces and how users' action and perception have been organized in complex forms that depend on the actual context. It seems that, those, uh, that from those relationships established by a dynamic flux and exchange of information, emerge other present body specialities between the physical and the digital, both reals. What is important to emphasize is that social practice and mobility are responsible and dependent to qualify those spaces and to consider a reconfiguration of our bodily speciality and a negotiation of other boundaries for our perceptions. So body can be understood as a physical reality, technologically mediated, elaborating its activities, which take place either local or remotely in constant juxtaposition of space and time dimensions not related. Some data can be embedded in objects and places involving the users in the reconfiguration of global, local, and personal networks. It's necessary to comprehend that other user artifact relationships have been evoked, designing new actions and behaviors, and in some way reconfiguring our understanding of daily life. Assuming the relationship between communication and culture to comprehend mobile, mobile technologies, we bring the concept of virtual dimension to understand the mobile user's usual performance, embodying the same corporeal gestures and intimacies in distinct social contexts. Uh, those interactions are recurrent, small and mutual dosages that point out and by the end determine a kind of unity. It means that users' actions belong to the present time. Those everyday events are constant and can create another understanding of the world and of the other, of the other, mediated by the user gestures and movements. According to Green, those connections between mobile space and time articulated in multiple and heterogeneous places and rhythms can be defined in three main contexts. I would like to emphasize the rhythms of the devices, uh, uh, sorry, rhythm of everyday life, uh, refer to the social and cultural interferences in which a specific device use is embedded. More and more, the mobile devices use has been included in our daily life, and what is observed are the stylized social behaviors being repeated frequently everywhere, establishing other social bonds and personal boundaries. That assumption can be understood by Goffman's thoughts about real ritual interaction and everyday activities. Uh, the mutual engagements actually presented during any mobile call or SMS sessions can suspend, suspend the time perception during the occurrence of those exchanges. The synchronic time can establish the sense of cohesion and organize a space, special condition to be occupied with the mobile users. So, uh, mobile phone users can cut themselves off from their environments or stay engaged with the actual world while making or receiving phone calls. Those devices do take people out of their actual context but also bring remote people and information to the nearby space. They combine both the center and the periphery of our attention and in fact provoke the constant influence of forward and back between the two conditions. Uh, according to him, the establishment of a common mood is decisive for those interactions to mark so 
Social Boundaries.